I'm standing at the recently renovated go-karting track at Autobahn Country Club that is now also open to the public. You can be a member here and run pretty much anytime you want, or you can have a karting membership. But the main thing in this video, we're gonna cover the anatomy of a kart, what it's like to drive one of these, what you can learn and walk you through what it's like to come here for a league night where all you have to do is bring yourself and your wallet and just arrive and drive and go home and not worry about anything else. Let's get started. Before we go on the inside to talk to Alan, the general manager, I need to say that he's been around the country with his son who has carted professionally and competitively. So he knows a lot even though he may be more humble. So let's get started on that. Hi, I'm Alan Bertinoli. I'm the general manager of Cart Circuit Audubon and I work here at the Audubon Country Club. So you've been in this business or been around carting for quite a long time. Can you just give me a brief or the viewers a brief overview of kind of your experience? Absolutely, so I've been involved with karting for the last 13 years with my son. Uh, we've been traveling not only uh, locally here at a lot of the local tracks, but also um, uh, nationally to some of the larger national events. Uh, we've progressed from local club racing like we do here to a regional level and then finally to a national level and done some international races as well too. But we, we're trying to introduce some of those concepts and um, um, you know features and functionality that we would experience with people when people travel here at the Audubon as well too. Okay. So Alan has a lot of experience that you can't get overnight. You know, it, this is something that takes time the, the energy, the work that you put into it, and then seeing your son evolve through the ranks. So one of the big things is accessibility. People may like cars, and running cars is very expensive, even street cars on track, and you get to a point where maybe just running around by yourself is no longer fun. This is one of the few venues that can introduce wheel-to-wheel -wheel racing, raise your driving IQ, so talk me through how this is a great gateway or a great feeder into experiencing that, experiencing the whole world without maybe going broke too. Yeah. <laughs> that's a great question because the thing that's very interesting about karting is that um, if you look at last year's, the, the uh, 2019 entry list for the Indianapolis 500, every 33 of those drivers at one time had karted and some of them even go back to karting. So, the beautiful thing about karting, it not only is a great entry level, affordable way to get into racing, but it provides you with the ability to learn racecraft. So the, the thing with karting is it's so much different than an automobile because there's no suspension. You're dealing with a solid rear axle um, and uh, very much of it, um, the thing that you'll notice um, if you've ever known anybody that has driven go-karts and moved into automobiles is they'll say the first thing they get in a car and say, man, this thing is slow. <laughs> and, it, and it's not slow in speed, but it's slow how it reacts. So the thing with a go-kart is it, it's so quick to react, it, it responds very quickly to any interaction that you have with the steering wheel. If you ever watch a very efficient, a very good go-kart driver, you can barely see their hands move. They're so smooth. The more you move the steering wheel, the more twitchy it becomes. So it's, like I said, it's a, it's a great avenue to learn and hone your skills, not only from a racecraft perspective, but also to stay in shape for, for car driving. In your experience, walk me through kind of the driving skill or what karting brings to the table over other forms of motorsports and then how it kind of transitions into driving IQ. Right, so um, in my experience, um, what, what is transferable or what is more applicable about a go-kart uh, if you're specifically if you're looking to move into other forms of motorsports is it's some people call it the purest form uh, because the cart is so sensitive first of all any any type of movement in the steering wheel is going to relate to some sort of movement in the go-kart so what it does is it teaches an individual driver to be as smooth as possible and the more you manhandle a go-kart and try to whip it around the slower it's going to go 
the interesting thing about a go-kart, and it's the, it's the easiest way when you're training a young driver, you have them push the go-kart. I said, okay, turn the wheel just a little bit, and it, it wants to stop because the way, and we'll get into this in, in a moment when we get into the geometry and the inner workings of a go-kart and how it operates, but the second you move the steering wheel on a go-kart because you're dealing with a solid axle rear vehicle is it wants to bind the cart up. So the less you move the steering wheel, the faster you'll be, become and the better racecraft that you'll learn. It's, it applies to a car, it applies to a motorcycle, it applies to really anything. Let's talk about not just going fast. Mm -hmm. You you know, there's, there's one thing to go run a qualifying lap, the fastest lap on the planet, mm -hmm. but it's another thing to put that one car and driver in a field of 20 or 30 other cars, stay in front or get through a field and chase that front person or maintain a lead. Talk about the driving IQ that karting teaches you that pretty much nothing else does right. until you get to higher levels. So um, another thing that I talk about when I talk to young drivers or how I had coached my son and, and how I teach a lot of people around the club here is that um, uh, there's no replacement for, for seat time. Um, and what seat time will provide you is what's called situational awareness. Situational awareness is just how it is, uh, how it, it is really not much of an explanation to it is other than okay, I've been here, I've done this, I know exactly what the cart's gonna do. And really, the only way to gain that situational awareness is by continually driving. Uh, driving in practice, driving in racing. Um, and as you know, um, um, any form of racing is, um, and a lot of people probably don't realize this, racing is very mental. It's, there's a lot of um, what you call racing IQ or um, you have to believe in yourself. You have to believe in the machinery that you're driving. You have to, you have to, you know, believe in, in everything that you do, whether it's somebody working on the go-kart. Um, and it's just like, and sometimes more so than any other sport, motorsports is, is a very mental sport. It's also a very physical sport. So it's really funny when you hear people say that, you know, racers are not athletes because it's, it's not only a, a physical sport, but it's a mental sport as well too. And I think that the mental IQ or the race IQ comes from um, a lot of repetitive driving um, and the go-kart is a perfect vehicle for that to happen in. Okay. So Autobahn Country Club is a country club. It's for members only. Now there are outside events, of course, but now this is the first time that the karting track has been opened up to the public. So talk me through like what benefits there are and what could I do as someone that wants to come here? No. So one of the major changes that have happened to set us apart from really any other type of go-kart track or racing facility um, in the area is that we opened up um, to the general public. So from nine till five during the day, Wednesday through Sunday, we are open to members only. But at five o'clock in the evening, uh, we have a new south gate. Uh, it's called Cart Circuit Autobahn Gate. It's on the south side of the facility. And we open up that gate and we host rental cart races. And we also have rental cart leagues that run at night as well too. So that's what makes us very unique where we're more of a hybrid type of club here where it's, it's country club during the day, general public at night. One of the very uh, unique things also as well is that the members can still come at night. So they can interact with the general public if they want to race, say for instance, in our league nights or if they want to just come out and run, so they can come anytime. So it's, it's really what we, I would consider a hybrid type of club. Okay, so let me ask you this. A lot of people that do indoor go-karting, you have K1, which is pretty much the biggest one, at least in the US. Right. Um, and then you had, which in Chicagoland, we had a facility called Chicago Indoor Racing, which had shut down. And a lot of their big issue was they over-catered to the enthusiast crowd, like to the hardcore, <clears throat> and they weren't able to blend general public in. So how are you guys trying to mix both together. Is this more of an enthusiast facility? Or are you really trying to get people in just to have fun as well? I think it's a little bit of both. So, and, and that really is another thing that makes us somewhat unique is that we can, we can not only um, cater to both types of groups, whether, whether it be general public or an enthusiast. So, um, and how we, we can do that is you have people that come in that just want to go-kart in the evening. They just want to have fun with their friends. They don't want to do wheel-to-wheel -wheel racing and then then on Wednesday nights and sometimes once a month on Thursday, I, ho I host what's called the league night. Those are more of the enthusiasts that want to do wheel-to-wheel -wheel racing 
And you would be amazed at the quality and the level of racing that, uh, that we attract for people that come in here on Wednesday and Thursday nights. We usually have a full house. Okay. It's usually between 30 to 40 racers every Wednesday night. Um, and and the, the respect that these racers have for each other and for our equipment, for my staff, has really blown us away so far. And it's been a really good avenue for us to not only promote people that are more of the recreational carter, but also people that may want to advance into maybe a, a higher level go-kart other than a rental kart. Now before I get into one of the lead carts and show you what it's like to race, we started to use Autobahn Country Club a little bit more for some of our car videos. It allows us to stretch the legs of some of the higher performance vehicles. The other part is now that the karting track is open to the public, we're going to be participating in a lot more races there at the karting facility and doing some meetups with the help of Autobahn. So if you're interested in karting or you just want to hang out and learn, this is, doesn't have to be about winning or any of that. If you love cars, you love driving, definitely come out and meet with us and we'll post some times on Instagram or kind of make an announcement on YouTube when we're doing that. Now across the US, there's plenty of facilities indoor and out that will do rental leagues or rental nights. The beauty of this is, well, let's face it, if you have a street car that you're either track daying or doing time trials, a set of wheels, tires, and brakes can cost you $5,000 easily. And that doesn't include your entry fees, the worry about whether you're gonna make it home, are you gonna break something, are you gonna go off track? The rental league, over time, and I've done this enough, it's great to be able to go there, not have to worry about anything, but driving 100% the best you can and getting in your air-conditioned car and driving back and not even thinking twice. And you could even buy a cart, a spot cart, for about $5,000. And you know, when you look at how much cars cost to just kind of tool around or just race against yourself on track versus the fun you get from karting and rental leagues specifically, you can meet some people that have traveled across the world or the US that have serious driving skill that you can compete with. Hell, when me and Scott did it, we, we had a night where we were racing against Sebastian Bourdais. So you'll be surprised at the level of competition that will show up at some of these things, and it makes you a much better driver. And I'd say this a lot, karting will accelerate your driving skill way better than parade lapping around a tr an open track or some autocross where you don't get a lot of seat time. So with that said, when you get behind the wheel of one of these carts, it's a very interesting experience. So I'm gonna get in one of the rental carts now and kind of walk you through what it's like to take off. When you do the karting league night for the public at Autobahn Country Club, you really don't need anything except your wallet. And I'm not kidding, they have everything you need. The neck support, the helmets, and if you want to bring your own helmet, that's great because, you know, these are all loaner helmets. They do do all the sanitary measures to keep them clean. But once you pick this out, they assign you your cart, your run group, and you get into the car. Let's take a look at that. Now, after you get all your gear on, your helmet and your neck support, you're going to hop in the cart, which clearly I don't have that on so you can hear me talk. These carts are designed for all shapes and sizes. Whether you have a ton of muscle mass like me, you can get comfortable. They even have seat inserts if you're really tiny. The pedals are adjustable forward and back. The seat is adjustable, but the steering wheel is fixed. So once you get in here, you get strapped in, you put the seat belts on. And the difference with the outdoor rental carts is there's a lot more cladding on them. There's more plastic, they have the outward bumpers, it adds weight, so it's a little bit different than the carts we showed you during the interior part. But once you're ready to go, the starter will come by, start your cart, and you're off. Now, obviously, when you set off, you have to get used to the fact, if you've never really done a ton of karting, there's some interesting parts about carts. Again, we talked about left foot is brake, right foot is throttle. Now, since there's a single brake module on the back, it's a solid axle. If you get too deep into the brakes, you will lock up that solid axle so quick, and in faster carts, it will cause a spin because you're just insta-lock. And what this, the braking system on these carts will teach you is kind of threshold braking. And if you're in a car, what that is, is when you get too deep into the pedal, it's that ABS uh, active, activation point that you're going to hit. And you want to get good at threshold braking to the point where you're not in ABS. And if you have a car that doesn't have analog, it's that threshold point between lock and not locking. So karting really teaches you the brake pressure with your left foot. The other thing is, we talked a little bit about this, is the steering. 
The steering on carts is much different because when you turn the wheel, the wheels don't turn evenly. And a lot of this is because it needs to create a tripod effect since there's no suspension. When you're turning, you wanna lift that inside wheel in order to get through the turn. And the reason it lifts one of those wheels is because both wheels in the back are spinning at the same speed. So you can't have them spinning at the same speed in a corner, otherwise it's gonna slow down the cart. So the way the steering is designed to flex the chassis, lift that wheel. And that's some of the differences with a cart versus a car that you're gonna notice. Immediate steering, the lift, the brakes, and the throttle. It's all about just being smooth. Once you acclimate to that and some of the vibration in the cart and just how you need to basically not use the brakes as much as possible on most karting tracks or rental carts, and just get, just get yourself comfortable and try to have fun. So I'm gonna walk you through the race format here. So there's a lot of vibration coming from this car, but the main thing to know is you get in here for the first time, it can be very intimidating. Really, you just come in your street clothes. There are seat belts for this and uh, this is not typical with normal carts, but with the rental carts, there's a lot more shrouding around you, a lot more protection. You have the neck support, which you probably wanna use just for your own well-being if you get nailed, which you know isn't all that common in this stuff. It's typically run well, but it's more of a just-in-case type thing. I wear a rib belt when I do karting, and again, it's just age, and I've been hit a lot in my uh, time, so I just like the extra level of protection. But again, these are just things that I do that you don't necessarily need. So the format for league nights, pretty straightforward and interesting. You have a three lap or four lap qualifier depending on the night. And you, you get out there in a group and they're separated by light and heavyweights. So they try to equalize the field as much as possible. So if they will ballast the cards to 180 pounds for lightweight and 210 pounds for heavyweight and they will put weights in the cart to kind of even that out. So you have the most consistent, hopefully most consistent experience as possible. So there's not some guy that's 120 pounds like pulling away from you in a straight. So it's great that they do that and the carts are pretty even. I mean, there's always some variance, but they're pretty good. Now, when you get out there and you run your qualifying session, you wanna give yourself enough space where you're not gonna get stuck behind somebody or get behind somebody that could potentially ruin your fast lap. The whole point of this qualifying session is to set you up for the first race. The fastest time in qualifying is obviously position one in the first race. So if there's 20 carts on track, you absolutely do not want to be number 20 because trying to move from 20 to one in a tight karting track with a lot of competition is not easy. So after your first race, you will kind of fight per, for position, get comfortable, and that final position in the first race will set you up for that second race. So if you finish seventh, like I did, you're going to start seg seventh in that second race. So from seventh, I fought and I fought and I fought and I moved up to fourth. And again, you know, you're still getting comfortable, but the main thing you wanna work on is smoothness and consistency. By that second race, you should be settled in and ready to go. So I got out there second race started in fourth i started to plan my strategy when i got in the cart and i knew that i had to have a clean start because i had been making mistakes and getting stuck in a, in a start and you start single file in the first two races so think about that flag when that drops you're kind of doing this rolling start know when to get on the throttle don't get stuck behind somebody and don't don't think about uh, delaying too much because if you blow the start, you're gonna get passed by three or four carts into that turn and then you, you're gonna have a hard time gaining those spots back. So luckily for me, started in fourth, kind of maintained my position and kind of fought my way up until third. And in the first race, I got lucky because there was a spin out, I took advantage of that and I moved up. In the second race, I moved myself up and stayed in pretty much fourth position. And I had third, and I had moved up to third, but I made some, I made one mistake, and that's all it took for him to pass me by, and I was stuck behind this guy the entire race. And it's a complete patience tester. When you're stuck behind somebody and they're being defensive, they're defending their position, and you can argue it's blocking, but it was my fault for not just holding on to my position. So I had to take that into the final race and learn from the fact that, okay, one, I need to be smoother, cleaner, and every lap needs to be consistent. 
So the final race I started fourth and I knew from the start I needed to move up positions. I was able to do that, I moved into second, but it was a back and forth between trying to fend off the guy behind me who I was stuck behind in the previous race and chasing and passing the guy in first. And luckily for me, there was a little bit of trading positions, but once I got past the first place guy, he repassed me again briefly, but I was over to overtake and then pull away by driving consistently every, every lap. Focusing on consistency and smoothness is what won me that race. And the two guys behind me, I never looked back. I just focused. And that's where you're going to learn a lot of driving skill from this and situational awareness. And we talked about that at the beginning. And this is something Jack hasn't done much karting and he was out there and he had a lot of problems either with incidents, contacting somebody or somebody contacting him or going off track. And again, it's one thing to go out there by yourself and just run fast laps and trying to beat a clock. Another to know where you need to be, where not to be, and work on that seat time. And that's what this type of setting or format allows you to do at a very affordable rate and there's just nothing like it. So I look forward to seeing you guys out there. We're gonna post again on Instagram or YouTube and when we're gonna be running out there and we look forward to meeting you up. Thanks for watching this and hopefully it was helpful.